Jesus, that you illuminate us, Lord. Open up your spirit of revelation here. Let us operate in the spirit of excellence, Lord. Correct all the mistakes, the issues, our shortcomings, Lord, so that we can build together, Lord, by your power and by your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, you guys will be seated. Praise God. Um, you guys have heard this before. Well, you've heard me say before that we're building a house, amen, a custom house. And um, one of the last things I've been doing at least since 2007, right about 2008, I was introduced to construction by my own bishop, by my own pastor. Uh, I didn't want to have anything to do with it, <laughs> straight up. Um, absolutely. Not, and I didn't want to do I, I I was a suit and tie um, type of dude prior. Uh, I was working in corporate, trying to basically work on my degree so that I can do the whole corporate stuff and get paid six figures because I knew if you had a degree, you're going to get paid six figures or unless you do something shady with the company, all right? <laughs> um, if you be the company man, if anybody knows what that means. So, <laughs> but I wasn't willing to do that because in 2006, I turned to the Lord. My heart went to God. And my whole, everything that I thought I was going to be started crumbling. But whatever I was building, God was allowing that to crumble so he can build something new in my life. Amen? Amen. And that was where the journey really began, was having to trust God that how he built was going to be better than how I built. <laughs> I know we say that, Lord, take the will, Lord, have your way, but do you really feel that? Because when the familiar becomes unfamiliar, <laughs> I feel like I'm preaching right now, when the things that we were used to become like non-existent, it starts to question kind of like your identity. Like, I've been doing this for so long, I thought this was me. And God's like, you don't even know who you are until you come to me. And I found that out pretty quickly in the spirit. But I'm not going to lie. I was very hard-headed, very stubborn. <laughs> very, very stubborn. That's what my parents used to say. He said, boy, you got a, they say they, 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 you got a thick skull. <laughs> say something, and it just like, it just ricochets off your mind. <laughs> doesn't even go, go to it. What I'm hoping for this body, believers, is that we let God build us up. We let God allow the Holy Spirit to show us how to build His kingdom and not our own. Amen? Amen? Amen. I know we ain't got like music in the back, so y'all got that? Help me, Jesus. I don't want to bring up all these... So, uh, what do you call psychological terms? But anybody know what Pavlov? Anybody know any of that? No? When they ring the bell to the dog? It's a psychological thing. You remember that? Okay. Yes. At least they would bring that up in uh, either studies or specifically psychology. They would talk about that. But there's some things that we're conditioned to or preconditioned to, right? The order of service, the lights, the camera, the music, this, that, boom, boom, boom. And we feel like if that's not in place, how can I build? What can I do? God is more concerned at this point, and I believe he always has been, about the type of foundation we build upon and the type of materials we build with. Amen? And I share with you guys at the vision meeting how the Spirit of the Lord showed me that many of us were peering other situations. Not because we just want to, but we didn't know any better. Some of it was out of ignorance. We were looking across the street saying, oh, look what they're doing over there. Look at all those buildings they're building. And, and in light, we were doing that with other ministries. We were doing that with other churches. Looking at what they had going on. Oh, I wish, oh, I wish Pastor Jones would do this. 
oh, I wish our, our church would do that. And the Lord's like, but there's a reason why you're doing what you're doing right now. Because maybe God is seeing that you need to get built up into something stable. Not something that is going to be just, you know, here today, gone tomorrow, but something that rests and land eternally in his kingdom. And so we have some work to do. We have some work to do. And so the Lord took me back to the parable, or specifically, it's a parable of Jesus, but it's a statement that Jesus made. And we've sung these songs, you know, Firm Foundation and all that stuff. But a lot of us lose the context of what Jesus was actually saying, his true intentions behind it. It wasn't just about the storm, because that's how we make it. Oh, konamana. See, I'm going I'm to have my little Holy Ghost moments with you guys. We always make everything about us. That's usually a sign of your maturity. If you make everything about you, it's kind of because that's only what you care about right now. Maturity starts to care about others. Maturity starts to seek God beyond just your understanding. Like God, illuminate. Everybody say illuminate. 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 Make something bright. Open my eyes up. Open my mind up to see more. It's okay where you're at, but it's not okay if you stay where you're at. <laughs> Amen? It's not okay. God is always looking for us to grow and to build. And the way that he does this is he makes sure that we understand the heart of his intentions, of what he's saying. We talked about a few weeks back, I think it was about the wisdom of this world, and we brought up some other items. I believe that's what we talked about, right? We, we opened that up. Now we talk about a lot of stuff. But this one here really kind of starts to paint the picture. He says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. All right? He said, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. The whole goal in all of this is not to give you an illustration of just building on a house on solid rock and worried about whether God gets you through the trials, because it's obvious he's going to get you through the trials. You know, the storm is not, is not, what's the term? The storm is not bias, amen? The storm is going to hit the unbeliever's life. The storm is going to hit the believer's life. We know that, all right? God didn't say that he wouldn't keep you from the storm. <laughs> he shows you how to endure the storm. Amen? Amen? He's saying that if you build your rock or you build your house upon this rock, right? But he really, if you, if you get into the heart of it, he's saying someone that listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. He said they become like a person that was a good builder. Everybody say a good Builder. Okay. So you have to have the heart that is committed to following the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, to listening and to putting it into practice. That's why it seems so kind of abnormal when, when we're introduced that, when we tell people that, because they're like, I don't... I don't see that. I don't see that in other churches. I'm like, that's the problem. <laughs> that is a problem. There are a few, I'm sure. We know that, you know, the word of God has stood to the test of time. And as we spoke about moments in the DFG, we we're kind of talking about the whole uh, Catholic domination throughout the planet. But the reality is, is that God has preserved his word and his people. Amen. And throughout time, uh, there is always, there's always a remnant that's building according to his precepts. Amen. It's not like they just get squashed and, and they disappear. Maybe they disappeared from some people's history books. Amen. But it didn't mean that they disappeared. All right. I was shocked to find out you know, from other uh, 
apostolic brethren and people of the faith, when they told me, and I got to even meet, you know, on Zoom, I talked to a pastor, but I got to meet one that the legacy comes from Thomas, the apostle. He's saying we trace our roots back to Thomas the Apostle. And I'm like, what? Because I'm, I'm sorry, I had this, you know, uh, we get blinded by a lot of things. And, and you know, I, I, I'm not saying that history is messed up, but history is messed up into the sense of they like to make you believe the Catholic faith is the dominant Christian religion and that there was no other sex, there was no other types that were out there that sustained, you know, because they obviously dominated in the culture and the government and so forth. So we've gotten this illusion, not saying that there wasn't conquistadors and conquerors and were they really doing that in the name of, you know, Christianity? No, not the, not the true source. You know, we can go into the crusades and all these other things, but what they were building upon themselves is upon a doctrine of devils a doctrine of domination, okay? And people mix that up with religion. Say, it's the reason. They'll look at the Bible and say, the Bible's the reason why we have all these wars and all this stuff, you know? Like I had to talk to that crazy dude <laughs> in Escondido, you know? And I told him, and he got mad at me because he was just like, the Bible's the reason why your ancestors were enslaved. And I was just like, you have no idea. Like, the, one of the earliest Orthodox churches is from Ethiopia. That they trace their legacy according to um, influences of Bartholomew and James. You know, they call James the Just. He was the leader of the actual Jerusalem church. It wasn't Peter. All right. I mean, Peter was pretty essential. Amen. He was on the day of Pentecost, preached the the straight word of God was the first, you know, sermon of the church age as we, we see it. But there's a, there's, there's a perception that God's house um, is, has not been built properly. And I want to make everybody know here from the Armenian church, to Ethiopian church, to even churches in India, that everything did not come through this imperialistic mindset, all right? That there were some that came through some of the early, early churches that built on solid rock, amen? They built on the foundation and the teachings of Christ. So the Spirit of God has this way of preserving, amen? And I don't want us to feel like we are this uh, kind of just dangling out there, uh, I guess, weird kind of church. <laughs> weird because the, the dominant Western culture of Christianity does not really follow the Scriptures. Amen? There's not this real close look to it. Everything is compounded with tradition, compounded with a lot of self, a lot of ego, all right? And so we got to kind of, we have to break away from that. We have to break away from that, and it's going to be troubling, it's going to be challenging, but that's why the Holy Spirit is here. That's why we have the Holy Ghost, to be connected to what the Spirit is actually saying to the churches. So as I was reading this scripture, he says, a person who builds his house on solid rock is like one that follows his teaching. <laughs> and it says, though the rain comes and the torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built, everybody say built, yes. on bedrock. It's built on stone, on something solid, something that doesn't wave back and forth, all right? Now, I don't know, who was talking to me about the 1989 quake? Was it you guys? I don't know. Yeah. But I was telling them about how I remember when I was playing, when that, that was, they were playing this called the Battle of the Bay. It was the Giants and the, and the what do you call it, the A's. 
And uh, me, and my, me and my friends were just playing like kickball or something. I don't remember where we were. Yeah, yeah, it was kickball for sure because we were in the streets when the earthquake happened. And it was just like moving like this. Like I was like, first time I saw it like this way. Because every other time there was an earthquake, I'm from the Bay Area, so we were kind of used to stuff. Every time there was an earthquake, we'd be in the house, in the, in the you know, classroom or whatever. They'd be an earthquake. And everybody like, oh, you know. And I'd be like, man, I was just like, I wonder like, how these structures just stay together, you know, after an earthquake. It always kind of amazed me, you know. Um, and then when that... Cyprus, it was this freeway section in West Oakland, and it fell on top of people, and they was like able to rescue a few people out, and then some people died, whatever. But that was kind of crazy, you know, seeing all that. But, it, but they would do simulations uh, after the fact inside of like the museums and stuff like that, and they would show how sand would practically liquefy when you get the seismic movement. <laughs> And then it's crazy because then I started thinking about this scripture and I was just like, wow, that's why the Bible says a, a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Amen. That's basically saying like when things get a little rocky and things get shooken up, right? That house is going to stand because it's truly on solid foundation. Solid foundation is what really holds things together. All right. And we're going to see this, this, um, this continuous or this continuity of solidarity being needed, all right, when you're building anything. Amen? He says, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't, everyone say obey. obey. So is it enough just to hear? No. Okay. It's also obe obedience. Amen? It says, they are basically foolish. If you want to be a fool, don't listen, don't do what Christ has commanded. You're saying, I'm not a fool, but you're not listening to the word, nor are you actually obeying the word. Okay? So then that's how you know the difference between someone who is wise and someone who is a fool. Amen? I don't want to raise any, <laughs> help me Jesus, any fools up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm telling you guys straight up. So when the Spirit of God gives me something, like Tuesdays, God guides me in a way and says, make sure everybody here is ready to build, and we're ready to build on solid foundation. But we also got to maintain and understand what we're building upon. All right? What we're building upon and what we're building with. Okay? He said, it is foolish. He says, like a person who builds a house on sand. On, um, on things that are uh, unstable, all right? Sand, you guys pick up a piece of sand. You know, it's kind of sad. Some of y'all probably like to go out to the sand and dig all them holes and stuff like that. Y'all put, like, y'all bodies in the thing like this, and they put the sand on top of your head and just wait for, like, a seagull or a little crab or something. But they don't normally have crabs out here like that. That's usually in Hawaii. Those, those things look scary, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. They look like fast, large spiders. They move super fast. Mm -hmm. they, ain't, they ain't nice like that. I, I, I think them things is nice. They ain't nice. But it's like people do that stuff, and they don't even know the dangers in that. Didn't they say that some girl died that way? She dug like some... You guys know about that? She dug a deep, deep hole. Yeah. And I used to always watch the kids do that and never thought in a million years that, that was, something like that would even happen, you know? So now it makes me think like, hmm, we got to be careful how we dig, amen? Hallelujah. So God wants us to, to be mindful of the, of the foundation and understand that that foundation is obeying and trusting in Christ, amen? You got to hear it first, then you actually will follow up and obey. He says, when the rain and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. It didn't say if, it said when. Amen? It, it means basically it's going to happen. And I think that's the one thing that we have to help our Christian brethren. Our brothers and sisters, you guys have to know, trials just don't like disappear. Okay? They don't say, hey, now that you're a Christian, we staying away from you. I would, I would argue they intensify. Because now you've got the enemy 
who used to be on, this, on, your, on your side, you know, because the Bible says that when we were sinners, right, practicing sin, the spirit at work, the spirit of disobedience was at work in our hearts, okay? So now you don't have, so now the Holy Ghost is working through our lives, right? But we had another spirit that was operating in our bodies, okay? And still, in some cases, if you're leaving the door open, he's operating in your flesh, okay? That's why we do deliverance. That's why we try to teach um, discipleship and hatred of sin and just really living um, uh, a, a, a life that has a mind that's renewed. Amen? That's why we're trying. That's why, at least while I'm here and I have the opportunity to teach you guys, I'm going to constantly teach you guys the Word of God and how to put it into practice. Okay? So, or whatever the Lord tells me to do. But Jesus says this. He said, He had finished saying these things. The crowd were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority. Hallelujah. Quite unlike their teachers of religious law. And that's what basically kind of boils down to how we operate now. The people start to know pretty quickly. You, you guys have heard a lot of probably religious stuff. You may have even heard, you know, some very kind of quasi-Christianity. Do y'all know what I mean by that? Quasi? Who knows that term? Anybody want to throw it out there? Fake, okay? <laughs> it's fake, all right? Like when they say pseudo, pseudoscience, all right? Like y'all heard of the placebo effect? Y'all know about that, okay? But yeah, take this. You do fine. Oh, I'm going to take this. What was that? It's a jelly bean. <laughs> it's a jelly belly. No, seriously, I, I really got healed. I'm feeling better. Yeah, I made you feel better because that's what you took. Because <laughs> you, you put something, you had a moment where you took that, and that's, and that's what made you think that you were walking in that healing. And I want us to be very careful because Jesus had warned us and told us that, and even the Spirit has expressly spoken of these things. That in the last days, people will be heaping up teachers of, for themselves. They will be entertaining doctrines or teachings of demons. And one of the hardest things to do, even for myself, was to go back to the scriptures, read this all again, and go, okay, what was I taught? Was it correct? Was this right? Was that right? And then go back through the things again and say, okay, I've changed my mind about this. I've changed my mind about these things. And one of the things that I will say in my walk is that the body of Christ has to have a real, like a real commitment to their identity. They have to have a real understanding. You've got to know who you are. You got to know why you're placed here. What, what was church in the first place? Like, was it for us to just like, you know, come into this world? Like, like, unless there's like calamity or anything, like I would, wouldn't see no issue in having a bunch of bunk beds here and people to crash if that was possible. But like, God is like, no, you're in this world, you're just not of it. But you got to learn how to navigate this world. You got to navigate with the pressure of having to pay bills. Amen? <laughs> you got to navigate with the pressure of everyday carnal experiences. They're pulling from you. Very simple, right? Work, some type of pleasure, whether it be eating or whatever, right? And then sleep. But with all of that, there's a lot of corruption, a lot of contamination that we've experienced. And we're trying to figure out, like, okay, is this all in what we're supposed to be doing? And you can probably find out pretty quickly in the Spirit. It's not. God is trying to navigate us to prepare us for this new situation. But we have work to do in this lifetime. Amen? 
Amen? Amen? That's all I'm here trying to get you guys to, is to get to this place where you guys know, okay, we got to build, let's build, let's do this together, and let's do this right, okay? Let's not pull anything from worldly uh, concepts. Let's not build with the wisdom of this world, amen? Let's build with the wisdom that comes from above, amen. from Christ Jesus. So Jesus said very clearly that we need to build on foundation. And he always makes sure that whoever he designates into building is going to operate under his authority, which is really the only real authority. Amen? So Jesus speaks right before the ascension, and he tells Peter, actually tells he was talking to all of them, but he says to Peter, he says, now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers, everybody say powers, powers. of hell will not conquer it. So God made a very clear, distinct decora uh, declaration that the church would actually be this signature body this signature building, amen, that would have complete domination, complete domination over the powers of hell. The powers of hell can't do nothing to us. See, when we get into that, you get that in your spirit, then you understand your authority. When you get that in your, in your spirit, when you get that in your understanding, when that becomes full illumina uh, illumination, as some of the other church fathers called it, when you get into that mode, then you're going to start recognizing your authority. Then you're going to go, oh, I see. I see what's happening here. I'm here not for myself. You're not here for yourself. You're here because the will of God desires it to be so. And now you've got to walk in that. Okay? you got to walk in what God has called us to be, not try to manipulate it so it kind of works into our own agenda. See, that's been the hardest struggle for the body of Christ, is not bringing our own self-inclined agendas into the situation. God had to break that off of me, even when I was serving and helping up other churches, or primarily 10-something plus years ago. He burned that out of me. And then when I become, became so selfless to the point where I would just really just help out people for kingdom's sake, they didn't have to do anything to do with anything. There are people that, you know, Sister Mary knows, but I prayed this one guy, baptized him in the name of Jesus, went to him, casted the demons out, worked with some other guys. They didn't even know who I was, nothing. They were like, who are you? And I just told them, I, I am nobody. <laughs> I'm a disciple. I didn't bring up anything about my past. I was an elder, it was set apart, all that stuff. I was like, that's just goofy right now. I ain't telling nobody that. I'm just here to help, right? And the guy ended up getting filled with the Holy Ghost that night, right? But because in everybody else's world, I'm just a nobody, right? I just, I just snuck in. She knows what I'm talking about. The guy had to go to the main person in the organization and double check. He didn't present it like he was double checking. He was like, I just want to make sure I receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, dude, yesterday I baptized you and you were praying in tongues. Like, what the heck? Right? But how do you think that made me feel for a moment? Like, for real, you just want to be on camera. That's all that is. You just want to get put in, into the YouTube video. You know, but nobody knew like that the night before, at least a few people knew and we caught it on camera that he got baptized. In fact, he didn't even get filled with the Holy Ghost inside the water. He got filled with the Holy Ghost right in the pews. The moment I laid my hands on him, boom, he went back he like this. And then I'm telling the thing to come out of him and I start crying. Then it comes out. Then he starts praying in tongues. And then the guys that are helping me were like, who are you? I was just like, I'm a servant of the Lord. Who is you? <laughs> I was like, thank you all for helping me. 
You know, because he was going down like a tree. He was, I had no time, time to grab him. I was like, ah, oh. And the other guys were there like, oh. I was like, thank God, because he was going to land and be gone. You know, and I was like. But the following day, he had to go and do that. And I knew it was a maturity thing. That it was like, I want to make sure. And I'm like, well, so you didn't believe that the, the first servant that got sent to you? And that's the hard part. Is sometimes we don't want to accept who God sends to you. Who God helps you in this journey. Y'all may have liked other pastors. Y'all may have had awesome, maybe cool, you know, people that ran into your life. Other maybe deacons or ministers. Maybe even you have a really cool YouTube personality that you guys love that has millions of followers. But guess what? You got really... This dude here <laughs> that's just called out of obscurity that ain't got nothing famous about him, but in heaven, God's like, that's the guy. Amen. That's the guy that's going to help you. That's the guy that's going to help you become that evangelist. That's the guy that's going to help you become that prophet. That's the guy that's going to help you walk in this discipleship. And sometimes that's hard for people to swallow because they're like, they want a different thing. They, in their minds, was like, no, this was how it should happen. That's funny because I knew that the truth was, that's how God does it. He doesn't have to. You can't pick who he, who, who he calls for you. Like, you just can't. You want to be that. You want to think you got that type of control, but you don't. There was many doctors. I'm talking about doctors, affluent people that I thought were going to be my pastors. That I thought was going to be the person to help me out. I didn't get up like a country fight. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> My bishop, who's a brilliant man of God, but he country. <laughs> he from Florida. And he came to the Bay Area. And, you know, and he did, and he did some, some pretty awesome things. But personality-wise, I would have never thought like, oh, yeah, you know, like... I thought I was going to, you know, have to ascend and let me go find a guy that has, you know, doctorates. And, oh, I found this pastor and he has this many degrees and everything else. And I was already locked, set in my mind. I'm going to follow exactly their whole template, their whole portfolio, how they did it. Then I got filled with the Holy Ghost in another ministry. <laughs> it changed everything. It was like, wait a second, what am I doing? <laughs> Like, I need to follow God. I need to follow the Spirit. I need to follow what happened in my life and not ignore that. Amen? And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Follow what the Holy Spirit is saying. Don't ignore what has transpired in your life. Build upon that. Amen? Build upon what has already happened. Okay? So Jesus is telling us He's going to build His church and hell will not be able to prevail against it. Amen? The blueprint. What is the blueprint? You guys make sure you have, oh, I forgot to tell you. So a lot of times I'm reading out of NLT and NKJV. So if you see a change up, that's why, all right? And sometimes I'll be reading out of ESV, English Standard Version. And very rarely will you see me bust out the Greek. But I do read the Greek, okay? I read the Greek to help you guys out. And I would suggest you guys do it too. OK, occasionally. All right. You can pull it out, especially like um, certain words. All right. But it still works. It still works. And it's something I found out about the rock thing, by the way. Do you know that Jesus was saying this? It's a little fun historical fact because it kind of relates to what we were talking about yesterday about the spirits in prison. He was like, were you the one for typing the two point mile or something? <laughs> you funny, man. But um, I think, you know, to make, them, to make a correction, the cedars, that the length of the giants, that actually was the Amorites. It was not the, uh, the Nephilim, the Nephilim. Now, the left Nephilim, I believe, were considered 300 cubits, which I think is like, they say 400 feet tall, okay? So still, 
big as ever, okay? Like, it ain't no normal. <laughs> That's like the Empire State Building or like, <laughs> how, how tall is uh, the uh, Statue of Liberty? I don't know, even if something was that big walking up to you and just looking at you, y'all probably, y'all, see what I mean? Our psychological, this is like beyond Jurassic Park, you understand? Like, we don't even know what the world looked like, but that's why that guy, he couldn't handle when, when, I, when he asked that question. Was the, was the, the Joseph kid. Remember he said, who do you think built the pyramids? And I thought he was going to, he thought I was going to say like the aliens or something. And I told him, no, no, no. I said, you don't like that answer. <laughs> I said, you don't want that, that answer from me. Because I was trying to tell him that's like, I believe a lot of other stuff, but I can't, I can't say that it was actually this, right? But I can allude that in the days of old, there were giants in the land. So there could have been a lot of stuff that was built that we think, you know, human beings were just like these little, I don't know, I guess we think we're like worker ants or something. Like, like, like we just got that, that bone density, right? It's like, yeah, let's just lift like two tons with two of us. Like, okay, for real? So it's like, I know, I know we have ingenuity, amen? I'm not saying that mankind is not like that, but then we need to understand that there was some type of communication between demonic or unfortunately, heavenly bodies, right? From the second realm, okay? Or the second heaven, so. But I don't want to go too far into that. But what I will say is the place historically where this whole incident went down was called Mount Hermon, okay? You guys know about that? Anybody heard of it? Yes? You raise your hand. Who says? Who knows? Okay, cool. All right. So we're talking about, and I think you can actually see it. A lot of people even talk about it being, they correlate it to Mount Olympus. Does anybody know what Mount Olympus is about? Okay. All right. So Mount Olympus is where they talk about Zeus and all the different gods meet up. Okay. And they talk about how they're going to deal with the world. Okay. Now I ain't talking no blasphemy because everybody be like, oh, you're getting to heresy now. I don't believe in that. I'm saying, though, that they could be extrapolating information and tying it together to their mythology, okay? And so this whole idea of these powers at work, okay, that did something, they conspired, okay? If anybody's read the Book of Giants or Enoch, basically it says that they conspired and said, we're going to do this, okay? And they did it upon that mountain. And guess where the foot of that mountain was? Where Jesus was talking, now, a lot of people don't know that. He was saying that. Now, people are saying, oh, upon this rock, he's talking about Peter. That rock meant m multiple rocks. It was, it was, I bet it's a Greek word for multiple rocks. But I will say this, whether you can run with it, we can go with the, Jesus said, everything's going to run through Peter, or he's talking about, hey, upon this rock right here, and this is historically where a lot of people believe the gates of hell, the gates of Sheol, to enter into the underworld was at, right there, at that spot, okay? So I can give you guys some sources later. There's a book called Unseen Realm by Dr. Michael Heiser that opens up a lot about this, okay? But what I will say, it's a really good book, by the way. Um, what, I will, what I will say is that Jesus was saying this spiritual entity that's how I look at it. The physical church is a spiritual entity in this world. Okay? We are multi... I, I, I don't even want to say it like this, but I got to just say it this way. Because I feel like whenever I say these type of words, this kind of gets under our, you know, Christian skin, I guess. Our, <laughs> our, our, our Western whatever. Like our ideologies get kind of ruffled up a little bit. Because it's challenging the way we think about ourselves. Amen? The way we think about what God said. God is like, look, I'm doing something awesome with this church. The church is going to stand out in the physical world and in the unseen world. Are y'all catching me? The church is going to stand out in government, in systems, in culture. Throughout the ages, the church is going to be here. Not only the church is going to be here, here. None of the attempts 
of the second heaven and everything communicating under the earth will ever be able to overthrow it. See, now I get something in the Holy Ghost when I hear that. Because then I realize, like, man, it ain't that bad that I'm suffering in this little flimsy body. <laughs> because God is transitioning us into this reality. He's already made it that clear that we have been made new. He's just given us this place of endurance right now. All right? And so this is where we have to build on top of this type of knowledge. Because when you build on this type of understanding of who you are, I'm going to be honest with you, like all the stuff the world can come at you with, it shouldn't be able to break you down. The storm should not be able to break you down. Why? Because now you have the knowledge of Jesus and now you're building on its firm foundation. You're saying, God, I'm not just going to trust you. I'm going to obey that this is what you're saying. You know that Ephesians actually says that the church, God had this mystery of the ages. And I shared with you guys a few, I don't know, months ago about this. But you know why we got to keep reminding ourselves? Because the devil loves to put a bunch of other thoughts to make us forget. Wow. To be honest with you, make you get so caught up with, oh man, I got bills, bills, bills. Got to pay this, got to pay that. You got barely any food. And then when you had a lot of food, you didn't want to put something to the side. Amen. <laughs> when you had a little excess, you didn't want to put that in a savings account. Amen. Ah, no, let's just do this. We going to Disneyland. We doing this. We doing that. We going to buy all this. And then like three months later, you're like, man, we should have made that thousand dollar. We should have put that to the side. Maybe you should have. Or maybe you need to have some faith. <laughs> maybe you need to be a, a faithful steward. Amen. You need to be a faithful steward. You got to manage your emotions properly. You got to manage your heart properly. You got to manage what God has put in front of you instead of making everything about your own pleasure. Jesus has been trying to get us to understand the spiritual reality. We are building upon something. This is why this church and many others that I believe God is illuminating them. God is opening up their minds. I feel like the spirit of God is doing something to people, making them realize like, hey, we, we can't continue in the same little generic mode, okay? We just can't. And so clearly God has set up a blueprint. So 1 Timothy 3, 15, Paul starts speaking to the people of God reminding them what they are. He says, so that if I am delayed, he said, you will know how people must conduct, everybody say conduct, themselves and the household of God. He said they have to conduct themselves in this household. You have to know that while you're in this body, in this temple, the Holy Ghost, there's an attitude and perception that you must have of yourselves. Amen? If you wild, let's, let's be honest. You know, Peter talks about people that are like, uh, he, he talked about like a crude or wild beasts. He said, ready to be captured and destroyed. He said, these are people that speak of spiritual dignitaries. It's like the people that just live however they want to live. They criticize they criticize everything. They criticize God. They criticize the church. They criticize God's, um, God's servants. Um, you know, these are the people that put the, you know, put the middle finger to the air to the Lord. These are like the rebellious. And God is saying that anybody that harbors that type of rebelliousness, he said, Peter, you guys could check me. I think it's in 2 Peter or 1 Peter. But he said that, People that despise authority, and we know authority comes from the Lord, correct? So the Bible says, amen? He said, people that despise authority, he said, are like unruly creatures. They're like beasts of the field, all right? Somebody may be able to check that, find that for me, if you guys want. I think it's there. This is like the Spirit of God is telling me. I think it's 2 Peter 3. But... Nevertheless, he's saying that they're ready to be captured and destroyed. Or it could be Romans 13. I don't know. But whatever it is, there's a conduct 
and which we should operate in. And if we emulate or copy any type of rebelliousness, guys, any type of like, you know, attitudes or perceptions that are just ungodly, and then we bring that into the household of faith, like how do you think God feels about that? How do you think God really feels about us building, first thing, building our own ambitions first before building things unto the Lord? You want everything? Yes. That's, that's what the Holy Ghost just gave you? That's the first thing, wicked and lazy servant? Ooh, that's, that's a pretty interesting parable. That was directly, that was the, he said the kingdom of God is like, he said, one that get, got several talents, amen? Several coins, several precious things, really precious at that. I don't know if it was like millions of dollars worth of stuff. I think that's a talent was a lot of money, okay? And it said that the final servant, which means they were in the kingdom, they were a believer, they're not an unbeliever, they were given something, and they hid that talent down in the ground and decided to do what with it? Nothing! And when the master came back, that master is the Lord Jesus, he tells the person, he says, wicked and lazy servant. He never said wicked and lazy unbeliever. <laughs> he said wicked and lazy servant. This is why I've been trying to tell everybody, don't be wicked, don't be lazy. Don't be selfish. Don't just think about your own situation and not want to do the hard work that it takes that God had already saw you fit to do. Why? Because God put something in your hands. He knows you're capable of doing it. You lie to him when you say, oh, I can't do this. You're a liar. You have a, deceive, a, 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 a deceiving spirit that's messing with your mind. I can't do this. I can't do that. Yes, you can. God don't lie. God put it in your hands. You can do it. You can reproduce with it. Everybody say reproduce. Reproduce means exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> You're given something, you build upon that. Okay? So from my understanding and from what the scriptures attest is that God has given us and placed something in our hands to do something with it. Not to hide it, not to put it away, not to say, oh, I'm just going to wait for Jesus to come back. Oh, you sure about that? Because they said something very, very, very hard to hear. He said, bind up that wicked servant, feet and hand, and throw them into the outer darkness, where they'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth. Didn't even say throw them into the lake of fire. I said throw them into the outer darkness. I'm like, there's another place? And they got all these other people, all these other preachers saying, oh, I didn't really meant that. It just meant that they never get to go to their ministry again. I'm like, what in the world? It said when the, when the, when the master returns, amen? And we're going to find out real quick that there is real judgment. There is going to be judgment on the house of God. There's going to be a judgment on the believers and unbelievers, on the servants and those that, did, that served themselves. It said, this is the church of the living God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and the foundation of the truth. Paul tells the people, in the church of Corinth, he says, don't you realize that your body is a temple? Everybody say, my body, my body. is a temple. Okay, so then who's running the temple? <laughs> is it a temple dedicated to the Holy Spirit? For those that are filled, you know you fill with the Spirit. He's saying the Spirit should be residing in you. He said, and was given to you by God. He said, you do not belong to yourself. That is the part of mind renewal, is to untrain and unlearn that part of your, your body that says, I own this thing, okay? 
Because when you own this thing, you treat your sin very light. Amen? You're going to treat that sin like, as, huh, I've been doing this for a long time. In fact, your sin going to be talking to you. Or, the, or your flesh going to be talking to you. We ain't did this in a while. Why are we not doing this? And I'm not surprised if you hear something talking to you, it, it, you know, could be demonic. Could be something sitting in your flesh that you need out. God is saying from the inside, he said the spirit of God is supposed to be occupying, ruling Growing with you. The Bible calls the Spirit of God our what? Our comforter, our helper. Amen? Amen. What is He helping you with? Helping you to overcome sin. Helping you to walk in holiness. Helping you to grow in not just, not just the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Amen? But the fruits of the Spirit should be at work in your life. This should be going through your mind, through your heart, through your attitude, through your emotions. You should be saying, God, I know the Holy Ghost is residing. Y'all understand when I get so frustrated in the flesh, the first thing I do is I walk away and I say, I can't do this. I go straight to the Lord. and Why? Because you need the Holy Ghost to intervene. You need the Spirit of God to be what it's supposed to be. You can't do this on your own. That's why he gave you the Holy Spirit. Even when you don't have the strength to call another brother and sister, you got to go to the Lord and say, Like, God, I'm talking to you. I need your help. What's going on? Get my mind, get my heart, get my attitude right. Then he builds you up. Then after you get built up, then all of a sudden your heart starts thinking about everybody else. At least that's how I go. I start praying in the Spirit and I start thinking about everybody else. I start praying for you guys. Then usually that should muster up some of y'all to say, hey, text this person. The Holy Ghost starts telling you. Right? Go send, send an email. Send these scriptures. Amen? Because now you're getting built up and you're like, oh, wow, I forgot. I'm not alone. I got brothers and sisters. I got family. Right. Just when you get in the flesh, you start feeling like you're alone, though. You start feeling like you're doing this thing by yourself. And it's like the Holy Spirit is with you and God is with you. And God has connected you by his spirit and connected you to other people that have the same spirit. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're building on the household of God. He says, so now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. This is Ephesians 2. He says, you are citizens along with all of God's holy people. Catch it. He said, you are members of God's. Everybody say family. family. You are connected. You are members of God's family. That doesn't change. Okay. That's for y'all hopscotch <laughs> Christians out there. <laughs> Be like, ah, I couldn't really hang with Pastor Jones and ministry. Okay, that's cool. I still love y'all. It's all good. You're still part of the family. <laughs> Just make sure you stay in somewhere where you can get built up. Because you don't want to be getting called wicked and lazy servant later. All right? That's why, that's why the local ecclesia and the global ecclesia are both important. All right? Your local ecclesia is where typically where you're going to develop your spiritual gifts, where you're going to develop... All other things will start to branch from there. It's typically how it goes. Okay? So God is saying you're, you're, you're a temple, you're citizens, but you're also God's family. And that's the thing we got to ask ourselves. Does God's family tri triumph our own? See, we got a hard time talking about that. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the tiers of our family. We got different tiers. Amen? Like for me, there's different generations where I can be like, I got my family in the Bay Area, then I got the family family that I don't really know, right? You know what I'm talking about. Family that live in another part of the country or another part of this or whatever. 
It's like, I don't know of them. They may have seen me on Facebook here and there or whatever, but I don't really know them like that. They don't know me. I may have seen them like seven, eight, some years ago, okay? Then there's the family family that's way out far there. Like, we used to do these things called family reunions. <laughs> and we go to certain areas. We go to Chicago. We go to New York. Middle Art, Texas. New Orleans, wherever. Atlanta. Seattle. All types. And someone will host. And I remember it was our time to host from San Francisco. We, we were trying to figure out, do we want to do Oakland, San Francisco? Everybody's like, ah, oh, San Francisco is right, fine. We do San Francisco. So, <laughs> and, it was, <laughs> and uh, it was pretty crazy. Because you get everybody in there. You get the country, <laughs> country bumpkins coming in. Then we get all the extra prestigious ones. And then we just get our little mix of folk coming in. But it's like, yeah, we come from the same bloodline, amen, you know, but it's like, are we really family? Because we link into that, but then I go into the Bible, and the Bible tells me, didn't that do the will of the Father? Didn't that are part of the ecclesia? Didn't that are part of God's family is my family? So then it goes into another stratosphere of thinking. And then the rest of my family, I can't, I wouldn't even, they don't understand that because they're not born again. And so we try to create these narratives that don't really exist in God's eyes. God don't look at it like that. Jesus made it very clear he's walking here, but that's the thing. We forget that. We forget that Jesus already addressed these things that we think we have a hard time addressing. That's where the enemy is trying to throw those things into your mind and throws in. Oh, you're doing too much. You're too close to them people. It shouldn't be that way. Da, da, da. You need to be able to look and stare right in folks' eyes and say, Satan, get behind me. Because <laughs> that's where it's coming from. If God knows you're connected to a spiritual family, that trumps your blood family. It does. That's the truth. It really does. That's what the word of God says. He said, I came to bring a sword. I'm dividing Jesus himself. He's saying daughter is going to be against mother. What? Son is going to be against father. Why? Because some person is just going to love Jesus more than the next person. That's the truth. Count yourself blessed if you can get your entire family to live for Jesus. Amen? That is a rarity in these days. To have your household really be loving Jesus like that. Even a little bit. It's usually some person is way off on the other end and another person is way off on the other end. God is trying to open us up to this. This is your reality. If I don't say that, devil will keep hitting you upside the head and making you forget. It was just all a dream. Don't, don't worry about that. Just keep lulling you to sleep. And you keep going back into your flesh. To your flesh is basically thinking again how it used to think. And then the Holy Ghost inside of you is now grieving. The Bible says the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the force, amen? The Holy Spirit is real. He is a person of the Godhead. He grieves. The force can't grieve. <laughs> and it can't grieve. It has emotion. It hurts when we cheat on it. When we think Less about the Holy Spirit. When we do more sin in our lives than actually practice holiness, it grieves. It grieves because it knows that you should be in relationship with it, that it could have helped you when you were in that trial or in that temptation. But you decided not to depend on the Spirit because you forgot who you were. I'm trying to wake some of y'all up today. You need to recognize that you are truly God's house. It's not a metaphor, it's a reality. 
And I know that your flesh is like, man, I'm used to something else. I don't like this type of teaching. <laughs> I want you to just tell me, like, how can I pay sdg e off? <laughs> Show me the five steps to my next blessing. How about the first step? Choose Jesus. And stop, your, stop choosing yourself. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow Christ. Let that be the first step. After that, follow what Jesus said. When we come together, we're trying to get this thing in motion. When we get devoted to all of these things. When we make all the things that we've learned here something that we can transpose and implement into this world. And there will be many, many, many different needs, meaning in many different variety of ministries have to go forward in this local ecclesia. Are y'all hearing me? There's going to be a need to address to the youth. There's going to be a need to address to the young adults. There's spiritual needs that have to be addressed. We do deliverance here. That's not just being turned off and on. We have to walk in this understanding, all right? He said, together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. He said, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. Meaning in what holds this whole thing together is Christ. You take Christ out of it, the whole building falls apart. All right? That's, a, that's, that's like a structural engine. Do you guys see this? What are those above? Y'all see this all spray painted? You know why they do that? To make you not even think about it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a term we call out of sight, out of mind. Okay? I know that in building. Because a lot of times it takes too much time to hang. <laughs> you already know what I'm saying. <laughs> You know exactly what I'm talking about. To do a drop ceiling and to put all, those are nice. I'm not saying they ain't nice, but it's a lot easier to just avoid that. Put all that particle board, put all that stuff up there. T-bar, everything. They're like, ah, we don't want to do that. So you see all these? Structural. Amen? One of them things go out, what do you think is going to happen? That thing comes, do, 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 do. Caving down. <laughs> Caving down. There's a lot of structural beams, a whole lot of stuff in here. Okay? This ain't, if it ain't done right, thing falling down. Okay? Or if it's not sized up correctly, there's an engineer that says there's only a certain amount of tonnage, amen, that can go up there. That's why they, we have to literally, they, they use like a, um, like a boom. Like basically like, the, like for the, I think there's what, probably four, maybe four HVAC systems up there. Them HVAC systems are hundreds of pounds, okay? They have to size it perfectly and say, okay, here's the calculation. You sit this, sit this here. That's like if somebody says, oh, yeah, we decided to have the zoo up top here, and let's put like five elephants up here. <laughs> How you get them up there is one thing. But is that structurally sound to hold that much weight? Probably not, okay? So everything has its own order. Amen? So God is saying, with the body of Christ, you take Christ out of it. You take that cornerstone out. The whole house, the whole building's falling apart. We have to make sure no other foundation, no other corner, cornerstone is but the Lord Jesus Christ in this ministry. Amen? In this church. It ain't me, y'all. <laughs> I don't know what devil made some people think it was about me. I, it, when I hear stuff like that, I just want to just take a, take a what he calls sawed saw off in the spirit and just blast that, <laughs> that old demon. Not the person or the people, but the demon that messed with them people. Because it's so far from the truth, y'all. This is like when we were talking about the Catholic Church yesterday. This ain't no Pope thing. I know I talk about authority, but it ain't that deep. It's really Christ, okay? You can blame Christ for making apostles and prophets and teachers and all that stuff, okay? Blame him for putting order together, <laughs> for putting elders and things like that and deacons. We just want to run. Y'all want to be like Animal Farm here, huh? Y'all just want to run everything like this is a petting zoo, huh? Like, come on, man. Let's not do that. 
We're not going to do that here. Amen. And I think the hardest part, because we're all building together, you guys didn't see that before. So it's like, let's say, you remember you guys went from different things. And I came from that too. I'm not, I'm not going to act like it, it was a lot. I'm going to be honest with you. It was a lot harder to build than to come to something that I was already set. When I came into most of the organizations, they already had their elder board. They already had their thing. They already had everything. So it was just me just attending a course, going through their little rigmarole, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden they was like, okay, you could be here. And you could sing a few songs with us. <laughs> and you can help on youth nights. And you could do this. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing stuff for the kingdom. <laughs> I'm juiced. And then the Lord starts talking to me saying, you know, there's more. <laughs> there's more to this. Trying to figure out, like, how do I get to that next step? You guys have an opportunity to jump, like, hands, feet, everything. Y'all got, you know what y'all have an opportunity here? Y'all have an opportunity to do a straight cannonball in the spirit, okay? Who like to do cannonballs? <laughs> y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. And they go out there and they, and they, and they hop right into, the, uh, right into the pool. Some of y'all are afraid, though. Who afraid of swimming? Some of y'all are you afraid? No, not too much. She had a little, you don't like. He push you on the edge. Ha, 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 hold on, hold on. Got like 20 people behind you. Be like, oh, how deep is this? They be like, stop. Just hop. Hop in. <laughs> Nothing worse than you see somebody belly flopping that thing. Be like, oh, pow. And they just be out like a starfish. <laughs> like a lotus, what do you call it? Flower. Pedal just, just, they gone. Be like, oh, get them out. You see, that's the thing. No one's going to push you in. Amen? Not here. I'm going to give you a little nudge, but I ain't going to push you in. Be like, God, get on. <laughs> Y'all need to want this for yourself. Amen? And here's the Holy Ghost. This is another analogy the Spirit of God just showed me. Some of y'all don't mind it. Some of y'all jump in the water, jump back out, jump in. But some of y'all got to be patient with others. Amen? Y'all got to be willing to look at others and say, hey, I'm willing to do a few laps with you. All right? Like, I know you may not have the same confidence I have. We may be in five feet, and you could be like, look, if it's 30 feet, I'm not worried about it. But you got to be patient with those that are five, ten feet. Amen? That's trying to help you. Right? Trying to try, God is trying to help you with your patience, with your ability to develop others. Amen? Are y'all catching what I'm saying in the spirit? Because I literally saw that because the Lord said some of them like to go in deep water already. <laughs> he said, but they're going to leave people behind instead of actually wanting to take the time to grow with others. Amen. That's another part of building. It said we are carefully joined together in him because becoming a holy temple for the Lord. He said through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. He said, you're coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He said, he was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones. I think we read this before. He said that God is building into his spiritual temple. He said, what's more, you are his holy priests. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. Guys, every time you do something for the Lord and you sacrifice time, you sacrifice money, you sacrifice personal desires, even your family, time with your kids, amen? Time with your, your auntie, uncle, all the people that ever wanted something from you, and then you do, that, you do something for the Lord, right? We say, oh, Every Friday night, I used to do this, right? Friday nights used to be something for most of us. You used to either be making some money or going out or eating or catching up on some Netflix or something, right? And then now your Friday nights is discipleship. Now you're out in front of the in and out preaching in front of the Winko <laughs> and the Hobby Lobby, telling people the good news, praying for folk. You pouring into other people's lives when you were so used to taking other things to pour into your, your, own, your own temple, right? That's what God is trying to get you to understand. You went from taking to now giving. 
That's what God is trying to reposition your mind. We become literally <laughs> ministers, holy priests unto the Lord. And that's something that's going to go into eternity, too. That's what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. That's why even Paul was, he was just getting frustrated. He was getting frustrated with the people. Because he's like, y'all flying over this. He said, y'all, literally. That's like some of y'all doing something. Let's say one of y'all do like a business deal here, and then something goes back. And they'd be like, I don't like that brother no more. Man, he owe me about $200. I'm taking him to court. We're going to Judge Judy now. <laughs> Help me, Lord. I'll be like, both of y'all don't do not go on it. <laughs> Judge Judy for nobody. And then Paul's like, don't y'all know you're going to be judging angels? Don't you know that the future is set up for you guys to be reigning and ruling, not begging, not going by the earthly systems of this world? It's always like this preparation has to start now. Let's move on. It says, through the mediation of Jesus Christ, he says, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. Now, this is kind of piggybacking now and setting us up for what we talked about last week. Whereas he talks about Paul, right? He said, Paul planted the seed, Apollos watered, but God gave the what? Increase. Amen? And now they move on from carnal Christianity to spiritual Christianity. To believers that can actually discern things in the Spirit. And so he tells them the truth about his apostolic calling, his apostolic gifting. Basically, Paul's like, look, this is the reason why I'm here. Okay? He said, because of God's grace, God's supernatural favor to me. He said, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder, not just any old type of builder, but an expert one, a one that's done this over and over and over again. Amen. He said, now others are building on it. Who is the others? The Timothys, the Titus. Right. All the different people he had involved. Apollos was a part of that. He trained Achilla and Priscilla. Achilla and Priscilla trained uh, Apollos. And Apollos became the teacher. So when Paul was doing other apostolic endeavors, now you got a teacher here. Getting people built up. Deep in the Word of God. Where he didn't have the time to do that, God's like, okay, I'll just raise the teacher out of your group. Now the teacher's over here. Doing what they're supposed to do. See, that's how the ecclesia is really supposed to grow. I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all something in the spirit. It's a beautiful thing when we can really like grasp it and go, oh, that's what's supposed to happen. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We're supposed to build together. Amen. Hallelujah. Not one person building. Amen. But Christ and his body building things together. Hallelujah. He says, now others are building on it. Who are the others for this ministry? Who are the others for this local ecclesia? Have you even thought of yourself what you look like building here? That's what God wants to stir up on the inside. Because the deception is you started watching so much things happening. Oh, we got this on YouTube and this on Instagram. And I'm following this person. And, uh, it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> but what about what God wants you to do locally? What is God trying to get you to do within your ecclesia? So this is what I love about Paul, how he breaks down this blueprint. God always gives a true, if they're a true apostle, if they're a true apostolic worker, okay? That's what I want to call it, an apostolic worker. A person that really wants to develop God's building, a.k.a. the church, and build up the people to assemble, okay? If they get that, if they are that, they're going to get the blueprint, and God has already given me something to 
lay upon. And what he wants everybody to start operating in is a mindset where they're contributing. That they just don't take, but they give. Amen? Amen. That they just don't pull from this ministry, they put into it. That it goes beyond just awareness of things, but actually application. How am I applying myself here? What did I do with the knowledge that was given on Tuesday? What am I doing with the DFG information? What does Sunday's message really speak, speak volumes to me? Now the rest of the week, how am I applying myself to, to now just grow in the things of God? See, there's an inward, external, and... You know, there's a work of the Spirit in every dimension of your lives, if you really start thinking about it. You should start having inter internal conversations with the Lord, right? So that He cleans up your attitudes, your mess, your thought life, the whole night, right? So you have that. It, some of y'all should know that that should be happening, <laughs> amen? We read it the other day, that Spirit of the Lord is getting communication, so like you run into, I feel like he's going to run into a lot of cessationists. So I'm always trying to give him this eye contact of like what I feel in the spirit that he has to start honing up uh, scriptures to, um, to counteract a lot of the nonsense they bring up, right? Is the spirit still speaking? Absolutely. The scriptures say it. Where? First Timothy, second Timothy. It also even shows an example of after the church. We see in Acts we just read it the other night. Acts 8 said the Spirit talked to Philip <laughs> and said, go over to that carriage. That's an example right there where we see the Spirit tangibly speaking to another disciple. Okay? And just having a life where we can glean from that. Saying, well, that's, that shouldn't be happening. No, who told you? T show me the scriptures that that shouldn't be happening. Everything is just a bunch of, you know, corroborated nonsense, okay? Because they're too scared because their faith is like here and your faith is like there, okay? That's, that's the honest truth. So a lot of this is, is for us to get into this place of, of building, knowing what you're here, why you're here, what, what are we going to do with this? Now you know who you are, now what are you going to do with what, the knowledge that you have? He said, whoever is building on this foundation must be, everybody say, very careful. Very careful. <laughs> be extremely cautious. Amen? Meaning, and you can't treat the things of God lightly. You can't treat these things like it's just, uh, you know, regular stroll in the park. We have to be aware I know. Now, trust me. <laughs> I've talked to builders, especially when I started getting involved in, in bidding out projects because my brain went from, and look, we say that, you know, oh, it's high quality. Look. <laughs> when you find out the budget you have, then you're like, okay, we're going to get this type of stuff. <laughs> We're going to get this type of stuff. We're going to go a little bit more here, but we're going, we ain't, they ain't going to get the top of the top. You know, that's why a lot of times contractors will be like, here's our good, here's our better, here's our best package. All right? <laughs> they don't say it like that, but sometimes they do say it that way. Or you hear them say, this is the bronze, this is the silver, this is the gold, this is the platinum. <laughs> this is our platinum package, or whatever. And... It's unfortunate, but you can go to a lot of uh, buildings or a lot of lots or new developments, and you'll find out some of them houses are kind of built kind of crappy. <laughs> speed up. Speed work. Who got to get this? Gone. Because their money is like, time is money. Get this done quick. Right? And some of them, if they get lost in the sauce, if they don't, you know, somebody... Misses that on inspection. 
then the people that occupy it later have to deal with it. Amen? They have to deal with the, 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 the lack of attention, the lack of detail. Bless you. So God is saying there's going to have to be a certain detail and attention we have to these things. Amen? We can't treat it like it's like, you know, maybe some of our own stuff. <laughs> there's a care that has, to, that has to go with it. Not a carelessness. Amen? As even for myself, after a while, when you do something for a while, you have to make sure that it's right for the people that are going to come behind you. Amen? I'm saying something in the Holy Ghost. Are y'all hearing me? Like, be pr- understand it's a privilege and an honor to come at this phase. Amen? You, you, what you guys didn't know is that some of the places, I'm not saying all the places, but every ecclesia had its beginning. Amen? They had people that built upon. What you hope is that whatever we build upon, people don't come in and try to destroy it. Amen? Or people don't try to come in and uh, they lose their integrity. Or they don't walk in the same type of principles that was passed down from the generation prior. All right? That's, that's, That's the other troubling side. But it's a great opportunity because what we're doing is we're looking at the Lord Jesus and we're saying, God, use us in every facet. We've turned turned a page, amen? We've turned a page where we're like, okay, this ain't all about us. It takes a while to get to that page, amen? But now we got to (laughs) really, Sheila, huh, exactly. It does. And God kind of shook our tree and, and we see who's hanging, amen? Am I just being real with y'all? So, <laughs> so I'm saying, for those of y'all that's still hanging, like, let's, let's, let's get to work. Amen? Amen? And so he says, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, which is Christ Jesus. He says, anyone who builds, everybody say builds. Yeah. On that foundation, only on Christ Jesus may use a variety. Everybody say variety. Variety. Okay. It means various, many different things. Of materials. There's gold, silver, jewels, which I forgot. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Jewels are nice too, amen? (laughs) Jewels are precious. Jewels like, you know, that's all the kings of the past. He's like, give me all the jewels. (laughs) Or the pirates, right? Throw them in that little treasure chest or whatever. <laughs> That's what it, isn't there always something about some type of jewels or some type of like, what's that movie? Like the mummy, all these weird places. And he's like, they have the jewels and the guy got all happy when he got to the jewels. He's like, I'm going to get some more. He has his feet. That one little, y- y'all remember that movie? And he's running off and the thing closes off. And then all the bugs get him. And he just dies with his riches. Instead of trying to, what was really precious was what? His life, right? He thought those things were more precious. Ooh, Kanabas say. It's got me preaching from the mummy. Help me, Lord. <laughs> got me preaching from the mummy. Thought that the jewels, you thought that the, 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 the riches of this world is more important than your own life. So Jesus made it very clear. You can capture the entire world. If you lose your own soul, what's the, what's the profit? What does your soul like? You see, Jesus is trying to get us to understand this. You're going to build now in this church. You're going to build now in this life. You're doing things that build God's kingdom. Okay? He's saying, if you're building in this house, I'm giving you this house, I'm giving you this ecclesia, this local group, us right here in this thing. Okay? He's saying, now... Start using materials that can last. Start using materials that have quality, not quantity. Amen? Did you guys notice that? How much gold? 
the Bible says there's going to be a city of gold. Amen? Amen. Okay, I ain't seen no cities of gold here. They even try to talk about it like, what's, what's, that, what's that old like folktale? There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, yeah, there was one. But it's like God is saying, look, some, this one is coming out of, from heaven. This is a different one. Amen? This one, the materials didn't come from this planet. It didn't come from this planet. came from something else. God is saying what you do matters and the quality of what you do matters. How much wood and hay and straw is around here? A whole lot more. Amen? Y'all go find a whole lot of pieces of wood and hay and straw. Y'all go build all the scarecrows you want. <laughs> hay bales and everything. Now I'm going to build this house with a hay bale. <laughs> takes a lot to get some gold and some silver around. Amen? Be honest. Like, metals and jewels are something that you just can't find right out the gate. You got to go digging deep for those type of materials. Ain't nobody at Home Depot saying, oh, yeah, I got three slabs of gold bars. Come on, man. People, the first thing that Jackie so quick, if they even knew, that Home Depot would be done. All right? Feels like Fort Knox up in there. <laughs> we would be like, I need uh, 12, two by fours, and I need some whatever, some OSB. They'd be like, okay. But ain't nobody got no straw unless you weigh out in the fields. All right? <laughs> what did you say? Tractor supply. Tractor supply? Oh, yeah, I guess OTS, yeah. They're like, yeah, give me my few barrels of that stuff. Go get you a, get some chickens as well. <laughs> I know, get you, get you a little horse trough. But he says, but on judgment day, everybody say judgment day. Judgment day. Are y'all catching it now? Why? That was the Holy Ghost her bringing up the, the wicked and lazy servant. Everybody say Fire. Fire will reveal what kind of work you did. Fire will reveal how authentic your building was. Oh, kanda bosha, Oh, this is what got me. When the Lord started showing me stuff I was doing at the other church in Bakersfield, he was like, ah, you mixed a little bit of you in that. He started showing me. He said, you care more about the way you presented and said things than actually the people at that time. And I can talk real with y'all. You cared more about how you looked in front of people opposed to actually them getting the help they needed. He was right. Because when I was younger, that's what I thought preachers were supposed to do. I even had my bishop look at me, and he told me, he said, hey, we was at that meeting. He said, I'm just going to be honest. He said, I feel like you, you got a spirit. Something's wrong. Something's off about you. And I got even more mad when he said that. And then, like, a few weeks later, I almost died in the snow. <laughs> he was seeing it from afar. And my attitude and my conversation. But it took me almost to lose my life, almost lose my life, to snap out of it. To start asking the Holy Spirit, purge whatever you don't like inside of me out. Whatever that is. Shook me. Because then I understood, oh wow, oh, this is pretty fragile. And God told me like, yeah, I'm keeping this thing together. You're not saving yourself. I'm saving you. Amen. You're not protecting yourself. I'm protecting you. You're not running the show. I'm running the show. You thought you were in control with your little Mazda going in circles. You ain't in no control. How foolish. I wasn't building gold standard at that point. I'm going to tell you straight up. There was always a hint of me inside of things. God had to burn that out. 
And I'm telling you, trials did it. Not just losing my life. You think you would have been mad. It wasn't that. <laughs> going through it. Going through seasons of trials in San Diego. Then the ultimate, almost losing her. A lot of that shaped everything. Then I got into, okay, Lord, I ain't budging for nobody. I'm going to seek you. I'm pleasing you only. Not me. So it became way more than just what I can get out of something. And that is the heart of this, guys. <laughs> when you become a real servant of God, it ain't about you getting something out of it. God will burn all that. You, you a very possessive person. God will burn all your possessiveness out. You got an ego and pride that somehow just getting pushed in the corner. God will put all these circumstances together where that would have to be destroyed. It's going to come to the surface. God would have to, like I said, tear, tear me down to build me up. That's exactly what happened. And so... I'm trying to tell you guys in the spirit, the spirit of God is trying to get this to really resonate with you guys. Stop putting you in things. Put God first in it. Amen? Amen. And trust that even if he helps you with that sacrifice, even if you do something for the Lord and you have it in the back of your mind, well, God, you got to look out for me too. Don't let it be about that. Just say, God, if it don't happen, it don't happen, but I love you regardless. I'm going to do it because I love you. Not because there's some payback, some reward. Amen. He's going to take care of you. But that's not your motivation. Your motivation is because you have a loving father. You have, a, you have something that God wants. He wants some gold standard out of your life. Them jewels, that stuff, I'm telling you, it's precious, it's valuable to God. And he says that the, our, our faith is so precious to him that it meet, is met with what? Fire, amen? So your faith and what you do is all hand in hand. So I'm asking this congregation, the Holy Ghost is asking all of us, how are we going to build here? Are we going to build with our own selfish motives? Are some of y'all here just like, oh, I'm just going to be here for a little bit, and then I'm skedaddling. I'm going to go out, and I'm just, as soon as I find a bigger, better, nicer ministry, whatever, like, is that really where your heart is? No, we got, I got to do something in the future, and I know the Lord. Okay, if that, that's cool, but like, what has God told you right now? Even if you didn't pan out, to what you desire. Would you be that? See, what y'all don't understand, man, I, I got to come down. I got to come down and get even real with y'all. Help me, Lord. <laughs> this is what you guys don't understand. And some of you guys out there in YouTube land. Just imagine the Lord Jesus gives you something, a business, a house, a car, whatever it is, right? Ministry. You put into it. Then, you, then it becomes the center of your identity. Okay? And then he says, amen, that was great. Now I'm shutting this down and I want you to go to this. That's scary to some of you guys. Because you're not used to that type of change. You're not used to that type of surrender. Because that surrender requires a whole lot of trust in him. Like beyond your regular type of trust. I'm saying that this man of God and the predecessors before me, that's the type of trust we had to get with the Lord. To the point where it was like, God, I'll give my income. I'll give my house note. I'll give whatever to you, Lord. I'm sacrificing my credit score. I'm sacrificing all these things that I thought meant something to me. God is saying that when you understand, and see, I can't even compare myself to even the apostles. Paul was losing everything. He didn't even, ch he chose not to have. Him and Barnabas said, don't we have the right to have us, you know, a woman, <laughs> and we can do stuff, have a, have, have a family? He said, or is it just us that sacrificed that part? 
Well, the other apostles get to have families. He said, yeah, we get to do more, but we don't have that luxury of going home to see somebody. Going home to look out and say, okay, now I can just cuddle up with my family. No, they cuddling up, you know, out on an island or shipwreck or cold. Literally almost losing their lives. And, and that's the thing. We're not even in that space, guys. We ain't even like the underground church in China. We're not like the Iranian church or any other churches that are being persecuted by their governments. Our persecution is different. It's not even, it's not even persecution right now, guys. It's just annoying. It's like annoyances. We see it happening, but it's not that, it's not direct. It's not like we're losing blood. You know what I mean? It's not like somebody saying, you, you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, okay. Put the gun to our head. You love the Lord Jesus Christ? I'll pull the trigger if you say it. Then you'd be like, yes, pow! See, we say that stuff and we can package it and put it into a nice little Disney production, but... God is saying, that is the type of expectation. I want you to build now with this mindset that whatever you're doing, there's no selfishness involved in it. That's why God has been trying to get us to this heart of intimacy, this heart of holiness, of what he desires. And yes, I seem like the most harshest probably of pastors you've been around. So what? <laughs> I'm an enforcer. I'm an enforcer. I do that. God calls some enforcers out. Paul was an enforcer. He constantly checked back up on those churches. When they was out of line, boom, he's getting them back in line. Even when they had elders, even when they had people in position, he was talking to the elders and saying, this is what you need to do. Giving them warning, giving them insight. I'm trying to give you guys warning, insight, instruction, everything, all the above. Not because I hate anybody. I don't hate anybody here. I love every single person in here. But, and the future generations behind you guys. But you got to love the Lord more than you love yourself to really do this. You got to love the Lord more than you love your own family to do this. You got to love the Lord more than anything else to really build. You got to get to that point where you're like, God, this is going to be tested by fire. It's, it's, deep, it's like it's deep like that, y'all. I don't even want to get into examples, but it's like. God may present something to you. Your opportunity where you can make like more money somewhere else. Or maybe. Even get more exposure with another ministry. And God be like, the person that sold into your life spiritually, now you're just going to jump ship because, you know, you, you ran into a few other people. When he's like, but you'd be more effective if you stayed under this leadership, get built up into who you were called to be, instead of getting used like, you know, like dry toast. <laughs> you go somewhere else and then they, they, they don't really want you like that. They just want you to be in this so they can look better for themselves. That's what a lot of ministries do. It, it ain't that nice the way y'all think it. Me and Sister May know about this. They get everybody involved, not because it's like, look, look what we got going on here. Because they made it about themselves. I want us to make Christ the first in our lives here, in all of your lives. You got to make Christ number one. You got to know that what we're going to do is going to be thrown into the fire. And God is going to test if it has real value, okay? So I would suggest that you guys all be careful on how you implement, how you implement your gifts how you carry out your fruits. Amen? 
how we interact and serve one another. The Bible says, if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. Very grateful for that. Amen? Very grateful that God would even give us a reward. For me, to know God is the reward in itself. Amen? Amen. To be one with Him. But He said, your work is not in vain. Hallelujah. He said, but if the work is burned up, everybody say burned up. The builder will suffer great loss. You see, that hangs on my head a lot when I think about ministry and our church and what we're doing. As we need to make sure whatever we're doing is really lasting. Yes, the devil don't like this ministry because we think and we know getting people born again and living holy is the utmost priority. Amen? We don't make no excuses for baptisms. Amen? Amen. We make sure they happen. We opposite of what the main church does. We casting out demons here. And we're not just making that the one thing. Amen? We're looking holistically at the body of Christ. Are we healthy? We're trying to get us to be healthy in our marriages. Trying to be healthier in our relationships with one another. Trying to make sure that we teach each other how to walk in holiness amongst unbelievers. To be the witness. Amen. We're not teaching fakery here. At least, I don't know, maybe y'all can call me out if, if, if I taught anything that was straight up fake. I don't, I don't think I have. All right. I'm not saying I teach flawlessly, but I will say that the heart of the message is always repentance, always turning to Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. So. And that's something you guys have to carry out. He said, the builder will be saved. He said, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. I don't want to be barely escaping out of nothing, y'all. That's me personally. I don't want to just be like patting off flames. Like, huh, I almost made it. Say, hey, you almost made it too? And they got like burn marks too. Like, yeah, I almost made it. We, We the almost made it crew. I don't want to be the almost made it, okay? I don't, I don't want to be that. I don't want none of us or the people in the next generation being like, we almost made it, all right? I guess we made it, but like we like, it's, it's to barely make it. It's like, like your, your clothes is all singed. You got like one sock on, got all burnt stuff on your face. Y'all ain't ever seen somebody come out of fire? Y'all know they be sneezing and got all mucus and be all black. <laughs> be like, here, they be like, Shh. I'll be like, ooh, it's like a big black thing on the, on the tissue. It's bad. Y'all know most people don't even be dying because of the flames, right? You, what do they usually die? Because of what? The smoke. What corrupts. I want us to go out like we, we, we flying, like it's like shining, like who's, who, who, who brought all that gold? That gold is it's like, come on, somebody got, got the noise, dee, 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 come on. We got like tons of gold coming through. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying in the spirit. I'm saying like this, y'all gonna have all the donut walls and TED Talks you want, okay? But here we, we trying to be like, okay, let's mark this. Quantify it. Say, so, okay, it's the quality. We go say, hey, how many baptisms we did this month? How many baptisms we did in a year? How many people got set free? Like, we don't got nobody even statistically looking at none of that. Somebody in heaven's recording it. Amen? The angels got this down. They got the books. But it's like, why are we not aware of what we're doing? We need to be aware of this. We need to be aware that our, our strategy is really getting people born again and then getting them plugged into a place where they can develop. But Satan be picking them off as soon as they come in. So we got to go to the Lord and say, is our heart really in this all the way? Or is, is it we, we, we have enough faith to do one thing, but do we have the faith to do the rest? That's what I'm sharing with you guys tonight. Because according to this thing, Apostle Paul didn't build by himself. Amen. Amen. He built with other people. 
Let's see what the rest he says. He said, don't you realize that all of you together, everybody say together, together. are the temple of God. He said, you are all together this temple, this family, and the Spirit of God lives in you. God will destroy anyone who destroys what? This temple. Everybody say, this, this. temple. God is actually looking out for you. Hallelujah. He said, for God's temple is holy. You are holy. He said, and you are that temple. Stop deceiving yourselves. I literally feel the Holy Ghost when I'm reading this to you guys. I don't have to bring any other interpretation. God is saying, stop deceiving yourselves. Cut it out. <laughs> he said, if you think you are wise by this world's standards, you need to become a fool. Everybody say fool. fool. To be truly wise. He's saying, don't adopt any more of this world's culture, behaviors, and customs. We got to cut it out. It's almost like they have the upper hand on the body of Christ. Seems like that. We too afraid to talk about LGBTQ, RS, QZ, alphabet, soup. We afraid to say that stuff because our cousins are this way. Our uncles are this way. Our family members. No, they're demonized. They've been influenced by another spirit. We know that knowledge now. We know that they can actually turn. That they can be delivered from these spirits. That the Holy Spirit, that the power of God can break any type of demonic influence in their lives. That they can be born again. And their identity is not in any flag or any other type of, you know, gender confusion or association but that they'd be in Christ Jesus God wants us to be bold not brash bold not just tearing people down but showing them that the spirit at work needs to be destroyed in their lives that the mindsets have to be challenged. But we have to adopt. We have to adopt God's ways and adapt to the Spirit. He said, you need to become a fool to be truly wise. He said, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. I don't know how to say this any other way. But all God has been trying to get me to tell most of you here, all of you here, even the people that been here, came, left, this, that, is you got to pull yourself out of this world, y'all. You're navigating as a pilgrim, as a sojourner. You're, you're traveling through it. But you've already been called out from heaven to accomplish tasks. I know, I know, I know. Trust me. <laughs> I know when you get home, you're like, what I got to put on in the oven? What do you got to put on this? I got to turn on this. I got to turn on that. I got to do this. I got to do that. Got to go sleep. Go back. Repeat the cycle. Amen? Go to our jobs. You don't think Paul knew that? He went, made some tents, sold some money, came back. In pursuit of even doing his side hustle or his vocational job, who did he meet? End up meeting Aquila Priscilla, which would be vital to the ministry. You guys don't understand some of the people you're going to meet just on your jobs alone, just stepping out on faith, are going to be essential to ministry in the future. That's very possible. That's why the Bible says the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So you have to operate in this continuity that you're, if we gain wisdom from this world, we're going to operate in foolishness. But we have to abandon that. Amen? Amen. we got to build upon the wisdom of God here. He says, as the scriptures say, He traps the wise and the snare of their own, everybody say cleverness. 
<laughs> he says, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. He knows that they are worthless. Everybody say worthless. So every time you hear a conversation, I know he'd be hearing them all day. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> The barbershop is full of conversations. <laughs> People that don't know how to stop talking. Amen. <laughs> Be like, I ain't talking about nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Amen. Be like, what in the world? What type of galaxy y'all got that from? Okay. He's saying he knows the thoughts, even of the most wisest person. He's saying they're worthless to him. Okay. He says, so don't boast about following a particular human leader. Amen. Let's just get that out of our spirit. Okay? Ain't nobody following no human leaders here. Let's cut that out. Okay? Period. 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 <laughs> we don't, I ain't following Caesar. I ain't following Pharaoh. I ain't following... No, we're not doing that. Okay? Christ is really ahead of this church. Amen? And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, is supposed to be guiding you just like he was guiding Jesus. It says, for everything belongs to who? Okay, we're going to say that a little louder. Everything belongs to who? You, you me, us. See, y'all didn't catch that. Y'all didn't catch that. I want, you, I want you guys to understand this thing. He's saying this thing really belongs to y'all. That's why when I be navigating, that's why I was trying to encourage the man of God. I was like, Step your faith up. Don't let the enemy work behind the scenes trying to throw you off. Amen? Go to that next level. Go to the next level. This stuff really belongs to you. We need to move with that mindset. You call me, look, y'all can be like, we go down the gifts and be like, I think pastor, that's what people say. I know he has to get the faith. Yeah, I, I do believe I got to get the faith, okay? I ain't just going to just hear someone say something and just go with what they said. I know that if I go forward in faith, God is behind that. Amen? Amen. You guys need to operate in that mindset. We go forward, Jesus' hand is behind it. Amen. He already says it in his word. Everything belongs to you. Everything belongs to you. <laughs> Everything belongs to who? You, the body of Christ. See, that's a scary notion right now. See, that's the most hardest thing for us to get. God is saying, all of creation is waiting for you, 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 all of us to be manifested on that day. Amen. Waiting for you to step it up. Waiting for you to recognize who you are. They're waiting on you. You waiting on God. Creation is waiting on you. I'm waiting on God. Creation like, don't y'all know who you is? God has already made you, made it very clear. You are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. The power of sin has been broken over your life. The power of darkness has broken over your life. You. you are new. You are children of light. You are children of the day. Act like it. This thing belongs to you. Now, why don't you start moving like it does? Why don't you start talking like it does? Why don't you start moving with your brothers and sisters like you are the body of Christ? I'm talking about the literal body, body of Christ. Stop talking like you still in this flesh. Stop talking like you still belong to your family like that. You don't. Yeah, my last name is Jones. So what? What is your name in heaven? God said, I'm giving you a new name. I'm identifying that with you. That's what he sees. Try to pull all of our stuff, our degrees and our, and our, and our grades and, and, our, and our identification. God, grab that thing, throw it right into the furnace. That's not actually it. Let me see the, what's, what's the real stuff. Oh, they was baptized people. Oh, fill the Holy Ghost. Oh, they stayed three in the morning with that person. Whew. Yeah, that's good stuff. 
That lasted. When everybody was calling, screaming at you, why are you out so late? Why are you doing this? Get up. You are getting a cult. You're in a cult. Run. Run for your life. Y'all getting it? Amen. God wants us to be solid. You need solidarity. You need to say, I'm in this thing. I ain't turning back. Amen. I'm in this thing. I ain't turning back. I know what I am. I know whose I am. <laughs> Amen. And I know where I'm going. And I'm going to build upon that knowledge. He said, whether Paul or Apollos or Peter or the world or life and death or the present and the future, everything belongs to who? You. Everything belongs to you. Y'all better hold that down. I'm telling y'all. If people was okay with tattooing on themselves, help me Jesus. But this is something you need to write on your heart. I'm going to be real. Y'all need to remember this scripture. Don't boast about the following a particular leader. So what do we boast about? He says, everything belongs to you. Whether Paul or Apollos or Peter or the world or life or in, and death or the present and the future. Why is he saying that? This is what gets me so annoyed. <laughs> I'm like, Ken Dabosha. If I can get every single person in here to understand this and those out there, you are really set up for eternity. Where we blow it is when we listen to the devil who's set up for another situation. Where we blow it is we limit ourselves and we look at this thing as, oh, this is just, this is all what we can do. And God is like, all this belongs to you guys. <laughs> the present age and the age to come. Amen. It belongs to my children. Let me sit down for a second. <laughs> Maybe they'll get it later. <laughs> it belongs to you. You're doing things, but this really belongs to you. You're stressing about the bills. You're stressing about, is the job going to work? Is this next move going to work? Is that going to work? God's like, it belongs to you. <laughs> It belongs to you. I don't know how many times I can say this for some of y'all out there. You need to get this in your spirit. Get this in your attitude. When you get, when you get that in your, I'm telling you right now, ain't no trial big enough. Ain't no trial big enough. I'm talking about the heart of it is God is saying, you need to start operating your identity now. That's why we chilling. We don't need to chill anymore. Y'all like, oh, we, we ain't doing, what are that? look, I'm going to move forward in Jesus' name. I want this church to move forward in Jesus' name Amen. that we build together. That we not keep putting all these limitations. I got to start stepping out on faith. The next step of faith for myself. But I want you guys to start building and saying, oh, wow, we're going to do this together. We're going to do that. Don't come in already with a bad mindset. Oh, we got to do this. We got to do that. I don't know if the kids are going to act right. Da, da, da. Just cut out the nonsense, y'all. We used to make every excuse for every worldly thing in this world. It'd be a concert, we're there. Oh, can I talk like that? It'd be a baseball game, we're there. It'd be a football game, we're there. It'd be a party, we're there. When it comes to the things of God, this means nothing to you. You make excuses. Because you feel like you're wasting time. And God's saying, my time. Not your time. Everything belongs to you anyways, but you ain't caught that yet. You making everybody think, you, you, what was it? Was it fear of missing out? You on that hype. When you're missing out the things of God. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to get in some of y'all's soul right now. This ain't for me like, oh, we trying to post this on YouTube like that. I don't care about that nonsense. 
I'm trying to do that to advance the kingdom. I don't want nobody knowing how my house looked like that. I put that out before we had the nice stage and did all the little better quality. I was putting out crappy looking quality videos <laughs> and had sound, powerful doctrine. Amen. Nothing but the spirit. It ain't nothing really changed. I just got amplified. Just God gave me more understanding. I'm trying to get into y'all souls right now. This age you're living in is preparing you for the future. But some of y'all got to stop building with that hay, with some hay bales. Amen. <laughs> with some straw. Y'all th y'all throwing straw to the ministry. OK, can I be real? Y'all throwing straw. OK, God's like, I want gold. I want jewels. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your, the value. How do you value what's here? It was like I was passing out them cards to them people. And was, every time I get them, because we know we pay money for it, and this is what they do with it. They close it and fold it, and I'll be like, what the? It's like, y'all grab my stuff like that. But then I'll be like, okay, Lord, <laughs> you, you provided it. But that's how I'll be thinking. I'll be wanting to give them, like, some basic, like, little, you know, paper. paper. Have the kids write on it. Come to Jesus. <laughs> and just give it to them. Call this number in the back. So I don't feel like... <laughs> I wasted that much money. That's what I'm trying to get us to understand. Are we going to rise up and actually really start building with quality and not, oh, I showed up, I did this. Amen. That's cool. I appreciate everybody here. But you know if you can plug yourself in and do more and let me help you guide, guide that. For me, I'm like, God, I want to do this. But everybody needs to recognize this. God is backing us up, y'all. That's what I'm trying to tell you. God is backing us up. When we do something, God is backing us up. I shared this before. I said, I'm going to go swing it. And the Lord said, I'm behind you. So then I'm like, well, I want to make sure people behind, we're all together swinging. We're all going forward. Not everybody trying to like move in the way like, hey, pastor, you think you should do this? I don't know if this should be. Ugh. Like, no, let's do this together. Let's do this right. Let's do this right. I'm going to stand and have you guys pray. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Spirit of God just spoke to me. Some of you brothers are going to have to get prepared. Prepared to really run your households with decent, with order, godly order, godly wisdom. Some of you brothers are going to be ready to humble yourself, to be used in different capacities to the Lord. Not saying the sisters, but I'm, I'm feeling something about the brothers right now to raise up and, and operate in a godly standard. A standard that men of God, an order that he wants you to flow in. He wants to build your confidence up. He wants to build your mind. He wants to tear your pride down. But he wants to pour in grace in your life too. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We got a lot of work to do together. God is going to build these men up. You women are going to learn how to help your husbands, how to help to prepare you to help your future husbands, how to trust God with your children, how to trust God with how you raise them. This is very important to the Lord. This is very critical to having a to building healthy families, healthy relationships. Because how we operate in our homes and how we operate here, they're all interconnected. God doesn't want us to put 
a mask on when we walk in here and then take the mask off when we get home. God wants us to throw all the mask away. That we put on the garment of holiness, the garment of praise, the garment of righteousness. That we pick up these materials together and we use quality, valuable things now to build. And no longer throwing 10%, 5% effort into things, but now go 100 Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your discipline. I thank you, Lord, for your chastisement. I thank you, Lord, for checking our hearts, Lord, at the door. Lord, I ask, Lord Jesus, if there was anything we said that are done was against your will, Lord, to please forgive us, Lord. Help me, Lord, as a leader, if I didn't do everything I was supposed to do up to this point, Lord. Let me be the servant I need to be, Lord, in your kingdom. For these people, Lord, not just a leader, but a servant, Lord. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you help every single man, Lord, walk in his calling in this ministry, Lord, in this ecclesia. That you tear down all the walls of anxiety, that you tear down the walls of shame, that you tear down all the walls of pride in the name of Jesus. That you fill up our temples, Lord, with your grace, your mercy, and your power, Lord, to accomplish what you've called us to do. Jesus, help the women in this ministry, Lord, to be confident in their identity in you, to not absorb, to not absorb anything from this world, Lord, that tells us that they have to look this way, talk this way, be this way, but they can be exactly who God has called them to be that they can have healthy marriages, healthy relationships, that they can raise their children in the ways of God. Christ, let your hand be upon all of our children. Lord, let them accomplish this task of reconciling their friends, their classmates, even people they meet, Lord Jesus. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you work on these generations. Work on the households. Lord, whatever fabric of love, Lord Jesus, let it not be torn by any division, by any selfishness, Lord. But Lord, let us operate in unity of the faith right now in the name of Jesus. Let us build together, Lord. Give us wisdom how to work together with one another to build each other up, Lord. I ask, Lord Jesus, that your hand, your peace, your grace, Lord, and your mercy be with us, Jesus. Help us to put our all into this thing, Lord. Lord, your word says that this all belongs to us, Lord. <laughs> Lord, let us walk in this revelation of who we are in you. Let us walk in your power, your authority, your love, and grant us with this sound, Holy Spirit renewed mind, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Guys, prep yourself. The meeting Friday at 5? No, 6? Um. And then we should be going out as a collective that Sunday. There's some market thing for a few hours. I think it shuts down like at five, right? There's a couple of hours. Maybe. There's a couple hours. Yeah, but we need to hit those people up. So whatever you got going on, look, like I said before, it's got to get to that point. Amen. You know, if you guys came here and there was like 200 people here, y'all probably wouldn't even be asked to do that. But the, re the, the reality is you guys have the labors. You guys are the people that God wants you to put your hands to this thing. All right? And you'll be showing others how to do it later, too. So you guys be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go connect. Get encouraged. Be safe. All right.